Welcome back everyone. Um, I'm going to do another demo here and what I'd like to cover is activating the surface. Uh, it's something that I talk about quite a bit and it's something that I use in my own work. And the reason that I think it's important to activate your surface, um, using this term that I sort of created, um, is because when we're, when we're drawing or painting, the process of creating art isn't so much about creating sort of from scratch, it's about responding to what you have in front of you. Uh, and that's sort of the act of a creative person. So I find that if there's something for me to respond to, then I'm sort of getting my creative juices going a little bit um, quicker and, and, uh, and I have a conversation that I can engage in. Whereas when it's a blank piece of paper, a white canvas, it's just sort of daunting and I feel like I have to have all the ideas plotted out before I even make the art. So I like to, to have something to respond to and then I'm going into something and it's sort of a conversation that I get to have with the art. Um, so I'm going to do a few demos with you on how I um, activate my surface when I'm drawing or collaging. And of course painting is something quite different, uh, but painters, as we know, historically have always used ground colors and things like that and everyone does it a little bit differently. But I'm going to show you a few techniques that I use for drawing. So here I have a surface prepared, a piece of paper. It's a heavy paper, like sort of a printmaker's paper. Uh, and I've taped it down to this surface just because I am going to abuse it quite a bit. So I don't want it to wrinkle excessively on me. But if your paper does wrinkle, no big deal. You can sort of resolve that afterwards with mounting it on a board with acrylic medium or something to that effect. Um, so again, when I activate my surface, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Because it's, it's a conversation that you're going to have with your art. Um, but I'm going to give you a few different ways that it can be done or show you ways that I've found to be successful uh, to activate my surface. Now, when I'm doing it, I have to keep in mind that it's going to probably be sort of like a background. And we know that with backgrounds, we don't want too much contrast. So we don't want a whole lot of light and dark. We want it to be pretty neutral. So I'm going to aim for a mid-gray, right? And it's going to have a bunch of information. It's going to be all over. So that's one objective. The second objective is that I want it to have the sensibility of whatever I might potentially be drawing on top of it. So when I go to Mexico, uh, when I take a group of students down there, you know, it's um, I'm sort of picking up on the, the environment, the atmosphere down there, um, which in the case of going to Guanajuato, means a whole lot of bright colors with a gray background, right? So you can sort of think about different ways that you can incorporate the essence of your subject without actually drawing your subject yet. So is it warm? Is it cool? Is it dark? Is it light? You know, etc. Uh, so think of that also before you get into it. The, the number one material that I have a tendency to use when I'm activating my surface is ink. And I just like ink because it's so playful. So here I have a little bit of an ink wash and I also have some water so I can sort of just throw down anything on there. And I have just pure water also available so I can sort of dilute that. I can play around with it, do a little bit of Jackson Pollock on here. Um, taking the pure ink, dripping it on, seeing sort of, oh, that was a lot of bleed. A lot more bleed than I anticipated. It got really dark. So I'm going to sort of move that around with some of my water. And you can see right away, I'm getting a lot of movement, right? It's getting sort of interesting. Um, so I'm thinking about composition too, right? How is this moving around? There's some other colors. I like this one. Some people like to use uh, gum Arabic or different sort of maskings to make sure that there's sections that are that are separated from the other ones. Um, so right there I have the ink and I might have to pause this video because we'll need time for the ink to dry. Uh, but before that, you know, I, I got these little stamps when I was in Mexico City. Um, and they're, they're different stamps with icons uh, from the Mexica, the, um, the group in the Valley of Mexico. And I'm using my ink pen rather than sort of having an ink pad and I can sort of use that to go something like that. So at this stage, 
you know, I might create sort of like a little bit of a border or, you know, I can see that there is movement going in this direction. So you see that one bled in there quite nicely. So I'm sort of picking up on that movement. I'm just going to do something like that. So you can see that I didn't just arbitrarily put those stamps in, right? There was this sort of movement from right to left. And so I picked up on that and I went with my stamp. Now I have some other stamps, again, of the same subject matter. I'm going to put... These ones are very directional also, and maybe this is going to create more of a platform because we know at the bottom of our paintings, our drawings, etc., we always want the gravity to be at the bottom, right? So we want to create weight pulling down, whereas right now my weight is very much suspended upwards, which can be a cool thing also, but I'm going to apply a bit more at the bottom and at this stage I have no idea what I'm going to draw over top of this again it's just sort of it's getting the conversation started right it's that awkward moment when you're sitting in a room with one other person and you have to say something you know because otherwise it's just nothing happens um, so I have all the wet media here regretfully maybe I'm gonna go ahead with the dry medium uh, when you go wet into dry you get these sort of these very dark heavy areas but I'm gonna just see what happens for the sake of experimentation um, I'm using a house painters brush and I'm gonna dip that directly into my powdered charcoal I like to use the house painters brush with charcoal because it gives you this really nice soft sort of application so so again i'm seeing a composition it's sort of heavier here it's moving that way do i want to counterbalance that or do i want to emphasize that i think i'm going to emphasize that i'm gonna so you can see again where i've overlapped there it went really dark and the brush is even pulling out some of the ink but I think it's starting to get pretty exciting and the brush creates these sort of multiple lines so I'm, I'm very conscious of the directionality of my application and on that note you know I might want just sort of you know what I did with the ink pull that out a little bit see what's going to happen if I do that and I got some of the red I got you know that piece that was there moving so I'm just gonna sort of move through the piece in this fashion uh, I'm finding it the bottom left really wanting a lot of weight to it All right maybe underneath here I'll let some of these stamps just fall in and there seems to be almost like this big eye right in the middle so I'm going to pause it for a few seconds. I'm going to let this dry so I can come back to it um, when it's solid and I'll explore a few different options. My ink is now pretty much dry. It's still a little bit wet, but not concerning. Um, so I've brought into the play a couple of pieces of collage. Now collage is uh, something that I like to do a whole lot to activate the surface. And I've hoarded boxes upon boxes of stuff that I can collage with. Again, thinking about the sensibility that I want to add to this piece. Uh, for this demo, I'm going pretty random with it. But I do have a couple of um, scraps from a, was a Calgary Herald from, I think it was the 40s. Um, so I'm going to throw those in there. Now I'm just going to use a glue stick. Uh, you know, when, when I'm traveling, sometimes I'll use glue stick. If I'm working on something that I think should be a bit more archival, I'm going to use acrylic medium. Acrylic medium, pretty easy to use. Uh, and that's just the clear acrylic that we use as a glazing medium when we're painting in acrylics. Uh, but it will fasten something on um, and it will be archival. Uh, which, you know, when we're working on larger pieces, we do have to concern ourselves with. 
Um, so this piece, we can see that I just glued it and it has a corner, so it makes sense to put it up here. It doesn't have to be up there. Um, I am gonna cover up this, which I really like. But having said that, maybe I'm just gonna allow that to pop out a little bit and sort of peek through. So there'll be like this connection in the background. So I'm developing layers. As I'm putting this on, I realized I probably should have cleaned all these little pieces of charcoal off so it had better adhere adhesion. Um, but we'll see. I'll probably like this and end up working into it in a few weeks. Um, I always think that everything's just sort of in the moment and then uh, I like it. Um, this one, pretty cool little clipping uh, by Lumber this week at a low bargain price with some illustrations, which we don't get to see too much anymore. Just the shape of this seems to emulate that. Um, I like the color there. So I might even do something like that. And then all of a sudden his face is relating to that. He's happy about the bargain. Um, so you can see I'm, I'm, you know, within my head, I'm thinking about this narrative that can happen within the piece because I'm slowly introducing pieces of representation. And as an artist, if you're not hoarding materials, you gotta change that because we need to have things on hand all the time. Uh, but importantly, we have to make sure that we have systems of hoarding, so filing cabinets, etc. So when you need images of animal, animals, you have a folder for that. All right, so we can see that this arc sort of, you know, uh, mirrors the one that we had done with the stamps. In addition, the direction of this ink all working good and I have one more piece of collage only because these two pieces you know they're sort of torn out of a newspaper um, which which we generally associate with collage that they're these sort of torn up pieces of um, of paper uh, but also you can you know get precision so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out my knife here and I have a little map maps are really great especially if you're traveling uh, so when I take a group down to Mexico, at the front of the hotel, they usually have a map of Guanajuato. And we'll grab one of those because what better an indicator to suggest that you're exploring a new place than a map. So we'll sort of, we'll take part of this map and I'm just going with the shape of some of the roads and stuff, not thinking about it too, too much. So I have this, and at this stage I might say, well, is that too big? You know, am I gonna get rid of a whole lot of this other stuff that I've done? Um, when collaging, what most people do is they always, you know, like try to find a safe little space for this to exist, but the real trick is to overlap right to sort of to start to create some layers because without layers you're not going to get depth um so we know i mean at least for me in junior high and health class they always had us do these these collages and everything i sort of like put out neatly uh, but once you start overlapping you get an entire entirely different sensibility so i sort of i like that right in the middle and the other nice thing about collaging is you get to to sort of open a narrative so whoever's looking at this piece when i'm finished they're gonna see this gentleman looking in that direction they're gonna see a map they're gonna see lumber for sale they're gonna see an illustration of old trucks and it's gonna remind them of something they're gonna they're gonna try to connect all that information so i'm just sort of playing around with it you know saying what what am I going to gain? What am I going to lose? Looking at that negative space, I sort of like that because I get this dark little area in there. I'm going to fasten that down. And there I have my collage. Um, you can keep going with collage and you can keep 
sort of do them back and forth. So you can do some charcoal, you can do some collage back and forth. Um, some of my favorite examples are of uh, George's Brock and Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso um, didn't like him as a person, but as an artist, he was pretty good. Um, so I'm always a little weary about celebrating that misogynist. Probably can't use that word on YouTube. Anyways, so moving forward, um, the next material that I have is some gesso. So I have both white gesso and this sort of brown untinted gesso. I like the both of them. Um, if your hands aren't getting dirty, you're not making art. Um, so get your hands right into it. And gesso is a really nice way to bring everything together. If I find there's too much contrast, so when I put my drawing over top, are there areas that are going to pop out too much? I like this contrast. It's very subtle. It's very dark to very light. But what's my segue look like? I'm okay with little pieces like that sticking out. But maybe, maybe I have to integrate this map with that background a little bit more. This edge feels really hard. I don't want super hard edges at this stage. So I'm using the gesso to integrate a little bit, but also to reintroduce the white of the paper in areas that might have been a little bit too heavy. Um, gesso is nice because it is, uh, it's, it's water-based, but it has charcoal, or sorry, not charcoal, chalk in it. Um, and the chalk creates a very uh, workable surface because it, it's porous. Uh, which it's it's designed to be because it's it's normally used as a ground for painting um, as opposed to acrylic paint which has a lot of plastic in it and you'll find if you were to supplement this application with an acrylic paint that you would get a very sort of rubbery plastic finish that you can't really draw into too well whereas gesso will emulate the uh, the paper a little bit better so you can see I'm sort of integrating that. Try not to make it too deliberate, but just responding to it. I like the way that these stamps are just sort of humming through. So I'm not going really opaque. I'm just sort of making it feel worked. Right, so I have sort of feeling like all this is just too much. Um, and I know you might be thinking, oh, but you're getting rid of all that, you know, lumber on sale or whatever. But all that matters is the picture, right? I, I like this edge here. I'm not going to compromise that too much, but maybe I want to do something like that. And it just sort of brings the charcoal into there. Um, so for me right now, this is a great activation of a surface. So this is um, sort of the beginning of something because after this, I can then take this, put this on my drawing board, and then go in front of a subject, any given subject, a piece of architecture, a still life, etc., and superimpose that onto here and sort of, you know, acknowledge the background and use it, but also feel like I don't have to if I'm drawing a still life, you know, finish every cup and every sort of value and get everything um, resolved to a certain degree because it's already, um, you know, activated. It's already resolved a little bit. Um, so that's what activating your surface is all about. I know that here I did, you know, everything and the kitchen sink, um, but uh, you might decide just to use collage. Just use one or two of these elements. You don't have to do everything. Sometimes I just use ink. Uh, but here's an example of how you can sort of bring everything to the table as a means of starting your drawing.
All right, thanks for watching and I'll see everyone on the next video. And please, again, feel free to leave your comments or questions underneath.